The abstract is a condensed version of your report and of your thesis. It contains all the information that you are going to be discussing, but in an abbreviated form, in a form that's quick and easy to review, and it's almost always the first section that's approached by a reader. It's almost always the first thing that someone sees when reading your thesis or reading your report. It's, it's almost always the first thing. It should also have independent validity, which means that it should be something that stands on its own two feet. You, sh you shouldn't have to read into more depth to understand what's going on. The abstract should be clear, it should be concise, and it should have enough information that a reader is able to understand what you've done, what your results are, and what your findings were. The abstract also reports the experimental motivations, the methods, the results, but with minimal commentary. So there shouldn't really be a discussion about what X paper has done before, and what this person has done, and what this person hasn't done, and what your results might mean. It's simply just a description. It's just a report. So what you've done, what you, your methods were, and what your results showed. Now, why is it written, written last? You might be wondering why the abstract is the last thing that you are writing when it comes to your thesis, and it's because the contents come from the research paper. So if you think about the research paper, think of it as um, your story. You need to know what the story is before you write the blurb. The abstract is a bit like a bird's eye view. It is kind of looking at what's going on um, and looking at what the paper's showing, and then it's describing that through um, 250 or 300 words. Try to include keywords or phrases that appear in topic searches. So as I mentioned in the previous lesson, when you search for papers, you might search on Mendeley, you might search on Google um, Scholar, you might search on PubMed, and those um, search bars allow you to search through the use of keywords. So what are maybe the five or ten keywords that I think are important when it comes to my work and my content, um, and try to include them as much as you can within the abstract. Um, and lastly, no references, but I'm going to caveat that by saying usually no references um, as the reference and the abstract that I'm, as the abstract that I'm going to be talking through um, actually does have references. But I think it's important to remember that if you're talking about and referring to work that isn't yours and is sort of a motivation and something that you are using um, quite heavily in your abstract, then it is important to, to reference it as it isn't your own, um, your own work. I've devised something called the abstract sentence model. It's basically a guide. So if you're stuck and you're not 100% sure, um, you know how to write your abstracts, and you just you don't know where to begin. Follow this model to the T, and you'll be guaranteed to have an abstract that's strong and that contains all the relevant information that you need. So the first sentence is the introduction of the background, um, and this is typically one to two, or kind of one to three, I would say, sentences. Then you want to identify the problem, what the gap in the literature is, and the aims, again, a couple of sentences. The methods and the analysis, so this could include your stats, what stats are you using to um, find these uh, results and to analyze. Then your main results, your conclusion, and how significant it is and then the applications in the future work. Now I've kind of given a bit of a guide when it comes to the sentence numbers, but don't kind of focus on those you know, too much. Um, if you want, you can skip the applications and um, add a bit more in the results, as you'll see that we did um, in, in the next abstract that I'm going to show you. Uh, but ultimately, it's a bit of a guide in terms of the ratios that you want to include uh, when it comes to your abstract. So this abstract is the one that I'm going to be going through in this uh, this abstract is the one that I'm going to be going through in this lesson. It's one that I published early in my PhD. Um, it's quite soon after I started in the lab, I was given some work to do. And luckily enough, it was for the edits for a paper. And so I was able to jump on, um, on this paper. And that's a top tip if you're someone who wants to get into um, publishing a bit more. Try to you know, ask for um, any work that you can do that's you know, helping with edits of a paper that's already in the works and it's already kind of you know, out there to be published, um, it, it means that it's soon to be published and it'll be published in the next couple of months. So as you can see, it's quite a long abstract, um, probably is around 250 to 300 words, I would say. So it's on the longer end. Uh, so it's the reason why I chose this is because I know that it includes all the aspects and all the different sections of the abstract sentence model. Um, it also has references, and I think, you know, I, I like I said, I gave you a caveat saying that it depends. It really usually doesn't include references, but in this case, I'm talking about quite some quite fundamental biological aspects, so it wouldn't be right not to reference where we got that information from. 
it's quite a long one, it's in one paragraph, and um, it does, it's quite a strong abstract, and it really gives you all the information that you need to know to understand what the topic is and what it was that we found here.